with space exploration and the upcoming private groups wanting to colonize Mars, that raises the question, is Mars for sale? Who would be in charge of Mars? Would there be a government that has could claim ownership, or would it just be land that people occupy? That's an interesting question. What do you think? I would like to buy some Mars, please. Well, who, who could sell you Mars? Who has that authority? I don't know, but I'm gonna figure it out. In researching this story, I discovered a little thing called space law, okay. which I had no idea existed. It does. And there are space lawyers, and I want to be one. I did see that in the... In the That's so amazing. They, they're I'm, the people who dissect the Outer Space Treaty. What was the other one? The Moon, the Treaty, Moon Treaty of 1979, which doesn't really hold up because the only countries that ratified it are countries that are not space exploration countries. Right, at which all. is like all the nerds agreeing together that the bullies should stop beating them up. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't I've make agreed, sense. I've agreed to that. <laughs> But um, anyway, so I have here the Outer Space Treaty and the Moon Treaty. I did some reading up on them. In You're going to be a space lawyer one day. Being a space lawyer, and apparently, uh, no like uh, no nations, no governments can claim ownership of anything that's not on Earth, whether well, it's orbiting Earth or out orbiting stars. Was this stars. the one that we formed before anyone had landed on the Moon, and everyone was worried that you, the United States would claim the Moon as their own? Yes, 1967 and 1970. So, uh, sorry, the Moon Treaty was after, no, be still before we landed on the well, Moon. Well, this, to me, it goes back to colonization. I mean, even on Earth, we've had a lot of colonization. People will just land somewhere and habitating it for a long amount of time kind of leads to ownership, much to the native people's chagrin. But there aren't native people on Mars, so how do we decide this? Well, there are, as of right now, there are no Martian squatters rights in place. Uh -huh. So even if we go there for a while, we still don't technically own it. But the problem is, is that all of these treaties suck. I don't like them. All right. I, I think we should be able to own the mo moon and Mars. Wait, wait, wait. You not liking these treaties does not invalidate them. Well, you realize. why do we go there if we can't have some of it? Well, <laughs> Eventually, I, you could live eventually there. these are all going to get nullified. I guess. I mean, is it the people from Mars One who are just going to land there and like right now they're saying, oh no, we're not, we're going outside of country lines and borders. It's, it's not going to be political at all. But I feel like it's kind of set up to become that way someday. There are private citizens mm -hmm. who feel as though they shouldn't have to agree to the treaties because not only did their nation not sign them, mm -hmm. um, but they are not a nation. This is why we need space lawyers. Space lawyers, exactly <laughs> right. There is one American who does claim ownership to property on the moon. Um, and on what grounds? Because he purchased a Russian uh, lunar rover that broke down and is stranded on the moon now, and he bought it at auction. And now he has property claims that say that rover and all the land that no. it traveled over is his now. No. Because his property resides on that If land. my car breaks down in a city, I don't own that block of the city. But if it breaks down on the moon. Okay, if it breaks down in an unincorporated land, I don't own that land. The earth is not just a dead thing you can claim. Space <laughs> law is not black and white, Kim. Clearly. I mean, how many space lawyers are there? Uh, only one that I read about. See, this also reminds me of um, private registries trying to sell stars, which I don't know if you know this, those don't mean anything. I, if you buy a star from a registry, you just have a piece of paper. They don't have any authority to sell you those stars, and competing registries sell the same damn stars. Close your mouth. Why are you so shocked? Did you buy one for your fiance? I don't really own those stars. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you are technically made out of stardust, so that is some consolation. That's sweet, I like that. That's really nice. So yeah, um, wait a few years uh, until I'm an established space lawyer, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about some, uh, some real estate on Mars. Okay, well you have not been to space law school, so I think these treaties still hold up. For now. For now. For now. I don't know how we're gonna manage these laws of Mars and who owns it and what these rights are. Let me know what you think in the comments. Manifest destiny, Kim. Mm, Manifest destiny. That wasn't necessarily a good thing. Well, it was good for us.